Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. This is Eloise here. I'm gonna go through with you in today's video two biggest mistakes people make when they draw music notes. So let's check it out. Huh? How to draw music notes? I know, I know! I show you! <laughs> what? Notes with a tail? Of course I know how to draw! Oops! Hello? Are you making these mistakes? If you are, then welcome to Theory Tuesday series lesson number 3. At the end of this lesson, you'll be able to understand why some notes are drawn with their stems pointing upward, why some notes are drawn with their stems pointing downward, and how to join the tails together. Okay, so grab a pen, grab a journal, and not to forget, a cup of drink, because we're going to get started right now. Theory Tuesday series, task discussion for lesson 2, note duration. Alright, in lesson 1, we learned how to name all the notes. And in lesson 2, we learned the beat for each note. So let's write the beat now. The note filled in black represents one beat. Because in one bar, there are four beats, right? So we will label 1, 2, 3, 4. Count from 1 again. 1, 2. So here we will label 3, 4. 1, 2, 3, 4. 1, 2, 3, 4. Okay, and then same goes for the third bar. Then this one, the last bar, we have this note head without stems. So this carries four beats. One, two, three, four. That's how we label. Alright, next line. So my fellow pianists, are you ready to play Love Me Tender on the piano? Say yes! Okay, let's go! This is our middle C. We will count to G. C, D, E, F, G. Okay, it starts with G, right? G, after that, go to C. So G, let's count up. A, B, C. So let's go. G, C. And then B, C, D, A, D. Okay, so one more time. And after that, here is a C, B, A. So from C, you go down to B, go down to A. And up B, up C. Okay, so let's play the third and the fourth bar. Okay, so let's talk about which fingers you should use when you play the first note, yeah? So I will recommend using the thumb to play the G finger to play the C. So we go and then fifth finger on the D. Second finger A, fifth finger D. So let's do again. Okay, let's count the beat, go. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Remember when you're playing the note with two beats, you have to hold a note for two beats. So let's do again. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Continue with the third and fourth bar. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Next bar. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. So the first two lines are the same notes, right? By the way, if you want a more detailed piano course to learn how to play a song on a piano, you can join me in my piano online course. The name of my course is Piano with Eloise. In the course, I'll be teaching you the melody to be played with your right hand and the beautiful accompaniment played with your left hand. I'll be sharing with you my powerful 3R system to help achieve your musician dream and bring your song to the next level. Now let's look at the third line of the Love Me Tender. We have E for the entire two bars and then after that E goes down to D, C. Then we go up, back to D and then back to E. Okay, so I'm going to use a fourth finger to press this key, E. 
Here's an E. So let's do from here again. One, two, three, four. One, two, three. So then four. after that, here I have to press the E again, but then I'll go to D, C. So let's do it. One, two, three, four. Remember this? You have to press this note on the piano and hold it for four beats. Let's look at the fourth line. Starting with E, we have another E, and then we go up to F. So that's why we use the fourth finger to press E. Because we want to free up our pinky finger, the fifth finger, to press F. Okay, so that's the reason why we press it with fourth finger. So here E, E, go up F, go down E. Go down D, and then we have a note A. So where's A? So here's the E, remember? D, C, B, A. So A is here. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. So I'm going to use the thumb to press A. Okay? One more time. Three, four. See that? I have to count two beats when I'm pressing the D. Okay, then after that, go to C. Okay, final two bars, I will play... Um, with cross fingers. So what do I mean? The C here, right? I'll be using second finger. The B, thumb. So I will cross over, use the second finger. And then, still maintaining my thumb at the B, press the B again, and go back to C. So it's like making a turn, you see? I do it one more time. So let's play the whole song together. I'm going to play the second version. So I want you to listen to the difference between the first version. Okay, go. Well, the difference between the first version and the second version is that in the first version, I did not change the loudness or softness of the song. But in the second version, I actually increase the volume and then after that, I decrease the volume. So this little tweak makes the song sound richer and the melody flow better. This is a little tweak that a lot of musicians do when they play a song. Okay, so this is something that you can try out when you're practicing this song on your piano. Okay, let's go back to our theory. Theory Tuesday series lesson number three. Today we will be learning note stems, note tails, or we call it flags, or we can call it hooks, and how we beam notes together. When it comes to notes with a stem, minims, crotchets, quivers, and semi-quivers, there are a few rules about whether their stem should point up or down. Okay, minim is this. Crotchets, Quivers, semi quivers with two tails. Okay? The general rule is when a note sits below the middle line of a staff, or you can call it staff, its stem points up. When a note sits above the middle line of the staff, its stem points down. If the note is on the middle line, you can choose whether to have the note stem point up or down. So what do I mean by this? Remember, staff is made up of five lines and four spaces. Okay, take a look at this note sitting on the middle line. So based on our general rule, it says that if the note 
is on the middle line. You can choose whether to have the note stem point up or down. So let's take a look. So this is the middle note, right? See, I can choose to have it pointing upward. This is correct. I can also point it downward. This is also correct. Now let's take a look at the rest of the notes which are sitting below the middle line. For example, this one is sitting below the middle line. So all the stems are pointing upward, just like what our general rule says. If it's sitting below the middle line of the staff, its stem points up. Yep, they are pointing up. And if the note sits above the middle line, so check it out. Here's the middle line. If it's above the middle line, yeah, all the stems point downward. Note stems, left or right. When a note stem points upward, it comes out of the right hand side of the note head. But when a note stem points downwards, it comes out of the left hand side of the note head. So what does this mean? Let's take a look at our previous slide. And the stems are pointing upward. The stem will come out of the right hand side of the note head. So for example, D is here. I know that it is below the middle line, it should be pointing upward. And based on our rule, it says if it's pointing upward, it comes out of the right hand side. So here's the right hand side, and I point upward. So that's how I draw this note. Similarly, if the note stems are pointing downward, the stem will come out from the left hand side. For G, this is a G. We draw it downward because this note is way above the middle line. So I'm going to draw the note stem pointing downward. And where should the stem come out from? It should come out from the left hand side. So it starts from here, draw downward. Okay, now that we know how to draw the note stem, we are going to learn how to draw note tails. Or we can call it note flex. Okay, so this is applicable for quivers or semi-quivers. Alright, so quivers comes with one tail, semi-quivers come with two tails. So the tails always come out of the right hand side of the stem, no matter whether or not they are pointing up or down. So take a look at this. This is a note with the stem pointing upward. So the stem must come out from the right side, correct? And the tail will automatically be on the right. It's always on the right. Check out this note. So here is the note head. The stem is pointing downward, coming out from the left hand side. And the note tail is towards the right as well. So you see, no matter how you draw the note stems, the tail is always on the right. So the tip is this. Tails always follow the direction of the music, that is, from left to right. Because when you read a music, you read from left to right, right? So that's how we remember where the tails should be drawn. We're going to learn how to beam notes together. So when we have two or more notes with a tail, like quivers and semi-quivers next to each other, we join their tails together with a beam between the tops of their stems. Whoa, what does that mean, right? I'm going to demonstrate to you later. So this is to help make it easier for musicians to read the notes. For example, here we have two quivers. So what did the rule say? When we have two or more notes with tail, which is like quivers, sitting next to each other, right? So we join their tails. That means this tail and this tail will be joined together with a beam. A beam represents this line that is on top, on top of the stems. Here I have a small little quiz for you. Stem direction when beaming notes. So I want you to think how to beam the notes if one note is above the middle line, which means we have to draw with the stems pointing upward. And another note is below the middle line, which means we're going to draw the note with the stem pointing downward. Whoa, one up, one down. How do we join the tails together? How do we beam them? So, say for example, I have E, mnemonic for treble clef. We have every good boy does fine. Remember, so every, that's E. So I'm going to draw um, like that, a quiver. Every good boy does fine. So fine is F. If I draw a note below F, that would be E. 
So I'm gonna draw E here, okay? Because it's above the middle line, the stem coming up from the left, pointing downward. Tail always point to the right. Whoa, how do we join these two notes together? Pause for a second and think, how would you join the notes? How would you beam them? So I have students telling me that they are gonna do it this way. But it doesn't, doesn't work, okay? It doesn't work this way. Some are saying that, okay, well, you know what? I'm just gonna do it like that. Well, why not we draw the stems downward then? So this E, so why not we do it this way? Here comes the tip. Work out which note is furthest from the middle line of the staff. That note is your guide. Correct. And this way is wrong. The middle line. So you just have to count. For example, from here, we go down one, two, three, four to reach this note, right? If you go up, you go one, two, three to reach this note. So that means from the middle line, this note is three steps apart. Whereas from the middle line, this note is four steps apart. So it seems like this note is furthest away from the middle line. Hence, we will follow this stem, which is pointing upward. So this note has to follow the same direction, pointing up, right? How to angle the beams? Is it drawn straight? Is it drawn angled upwards or downwards? Well, here's a general rule. If the music is rising in pitch, we angle the stems upwards. If the music is descending in pitch, we angle the stems downward. Pitch represents the tone of the note. For example, here we have G, A, B, C, right? So if you play this four note on the piano, you'll hear that the pitch is rising. So if the pitch is rising, the stems will be drawn upward. So we join it this way. If the music is descending in pitch, for example, if you go down from C, go down to B, A, G, you hear that the pitch is descending. So then we angle the stems downward and that's how we beam all the notes together. Okay? So, same for the stems that are pointing downward. Because the pitch is descending, so we angle the beam downward. Here, stems are pointing downward, but then the pitch is ascending, it's rising. So then, we beam it upward. Okay, so what do you think about this video so far? You can comment below to share with me your thought. If you like this type of video, remember to like and subscribe to this channel. Also, click the bell button to be notified whenever a new video is uploaded. End of today's lesson. The task for the week is, I want you to practice the song Love Me Tender on the piano. And then on the next video on our Theory Tuesday series, we will be learning dotted notes and tight notes. And then I just want to add a bonus. That is, when we are learning tight notes, I will tell you the difference between tight notes and slur. Aha! Uh -huh. Okay, so I'll see you next week. So stay tuned for our next lesson. Okay, see you, bye!